Hey guys, uh, I want to take a look at dividing a whole number by a fraction. We sort of wrapped up Thursday uh, looking at this, and, and I want to do a little bit of review of this before I turn you loose to do some practicing on your own. We're going to take a look at the models to understand why this works and why we do it the way we do it. Then we're going to look at the math to, to make sure we understand that before you start doing some practice problems, and then eventually move on to some real-life scenarios of where you take a whole number and divide it by a fraction. So we looked a lot yesterday at... The idea of if we did this similar to what we did to multiplication, we would uh, we would write it as three over one divided by one fourth. And what we looked at is we saw okay three divided by one that's a piece of cake that's three, but one divided by four is either a decimal or a fraction. And we don't really want to have a uh, a decimal or a fraction within our uh, within our other fraction. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't work. And, and if I tried to change that improper fraction to a mixed number, it's going to look really, really weird. So let's take a look at the model first to understand what the answer should be, and then we'll go back and review the math of how we get there. So what I want you to do is I want you to kind of follow along with me here. And we're going to take a look. So let's go ahead and start off by modeling uh, the number three. So let's make our three boxes. Okay. And then once you have those three boxes made, we'll go ahead and shade them in. All right, and again, they don't have to be perfect, but we just want to shade them in to show that we have three whole. And your shading can be like mine. Mine's, I mean, mine's not perfect. It just, it is what it is. You can just make it so that it looks like halfway decent, and then we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so there's my three, and hopefully you have that too. So I've modeled my three. The next thing I have to do is I have to model the second fraction, which is one fourth. So if you remember, if we have one fourth for our second one, we need to split our three boxes into fourths. So I can go ahead and, and we can do this a couple different ways. I'll, I'll do it like a window this time. We'll do, there's four, there's four equal parts, there's four equal parts, okay? And so now the idea is we're making groups of one-fourth. So I want to know how many one-fourths do I have up there. So what I can do is I can take a look and say, okay, well, here is a one-fourth, here is a one-fourth, here is a one-fourth, and here is a one-fourth. There's four of them in that original one, so that means that there's going to be four in this one, and then there's going to be four in the third one. So if I said, if I split up and made groups of one-fourth, I would be able to separate and make 12 groups, because I could take the one and put it in a pile, then two and put it in a pile, and three, and so on and so on. And so when we look at that, our answer then, and this is the same problem we started off with yesterday, we know that our answer is 12 whole. The idea that behind it is, how do we get there math-wise? And if you remember, I talked about when we get stuck with division, when we don't know a number divided by another number, the first question I have to ask is, well, what could you multiply together to get that number? And so if we think about it as 12, sometimes if we're saying, well, what's 12 divided by 3? Well, my first response would be, what would you take times 3 to get 12? So we're going to kind of work this problem backwards in the opposite way. And the opposite of division, we said, was multiplication. So we are going to actually rewrite this problem using multiplication. So I have my 3 over 1, and I'm going to make it a multiplication. Now, remember, we're doing it sort of the opposite way. And since we're going in the opposite direction, we can't just multiply the same original fractions together because that's not going to give us the right answer. Think about it. When I said this before, I said 12 divided by 4 is 3. I didn't say, oh, well, then, then uh, 12 divided or, or 12 times 3 is 4. It doesn't work that way. You have to sort of change your problem around a little bit. And so the way we're going to change the problem around is that instead of having 1 fourth, we're going to do the opposite of 1 fourth, which in this case would be 4 over 1. Okay? And now, if you notice, 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 times 1 is 1. And if we have 12 over 1, or we take 12 divided by 1, we know that our answer is 12. So the reason we use 4 over 1 is because it is the reciprocal of 1 fourth. Okay? So for example, 1 fourth times 4 over 1 gives me 1 whole, or 
4 over 4. I didn't write that very well. Let me change that up a little bit here. Looks like 4 over 4, which is equal to 1 whole. That's the reciprocal. It's the opposite. So just flipping the fraction around. That's, the, that's what I was talking to you guys about, understanding what's going on. We flip the fraction and multiply because we're doing the opposite operation to kind of work backwards to get the answer. Okay? So remember, again, step one, you're going to change your whole number to a fraction. Step two, you're going to change the problem to multiplication. And step three, you're going to write the opposite of that second fraction or flip the fraction or write it upside down, however you want to say it. But those are the three steps in order for you to solve this problem. So let's take a look at another example. Then I'm going to have you try one on your own, and then we're going to get started on some practice. All right, so let's look at something like a little bit more complex. Let's do 4 divided by, let's go with 3 fifths, okay? Go 4 divided by 3 fifths. Again, I'm going to start off by drawing my models just to help me sort of visualize where I should be at the end. So I'm going to make my four boxes, so you should do that too. I'm kind of running myself out of room here, but it'll work. All right, and I've done those, and I'm going to go ahead and shade those boxes in. To show that we have four whole. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're not winning any coloring contests. So hopefully you're shading in as I am also. Okay. Second fraction says three fifths. So that means that I have to split these fra these boxes up into five pieces because the fraction is fifths. So we're going to make our four lines to make fifths. One. All right. So we're going to split each one of them up. All right, so hopefully you have the same thing. Now, I want to make groups of three-fifths. So before, when I made my groups of one-fourth, I just had to choose one of the four. See, I just had to choose one of the fourths that were in the box. Now, in this case, I'm doing three-fifths, so I have to select and I have to group three of the fifths. So check this out. In the first box, I've broken up into five pieces. But if there's five pieces there, then I definitely have a group of three. Here's my group of three. Now you'll notice there's two left over. Well, that doesn't mean that they just sit there and do nothing. I can take one from the next whole number and group them together so it looks like this. And there's three-fifths together. Another three-fifths together. There's one here at the end, so I'm going to group him with two from the other one and make some make three fifths. This one is going to be three fifths exactly here. And then lastly there's three fifths here, but there's not a third over here in order for me to finish that out. Now if you look here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six full groups of fifths or of three-fifths, I should say. And I've got a couple left over. Now, I know then that my whole number is going to be six. Here's the tricky part. And you'll see this when you, when you do the actual math, it makes more sense. When you actually sit down and do the math, you'll understand why this works out. But looking at this, you would probably say, oh, well, there's one two-fifths left over, so it would be six and two-fifths. But that's not correct. The reason that's not correct is because my group is not two-fifths. My group is three-fifths. So if I have, if it takes three to make a group and I only have two, I only have two out of my three that I need, right? I need three, I only have two. Two out of three, which would look like two-thirds. That's the answer. Why? Let's look at the math. Here's why it's two-thirds and not two-fifths. Again, I'm going to make my whole number into a fraction. I'm going to change my problem to multiplication, 
and I'm going to do, since I'm doing the opposite operation, I'm going to multiply by the opposite of the former fraction. So instead of three-fifths, I'm going to do five-thirds. Take a look now what number's on the bottom for my denominator there. My three is now on the bottom. Four times five is 20, and one times three is three. So I've got the improper fraction of 20 thirds. In order to do that and be able to uh, make sure we have a mixed number, we're going to take 20 and divide it by 3. 3 goes into 20. Well, 6 times 3 is 18. And you'll see that there's 2 left over here. I do my backwards check mark. 6 and 2 thirds equals 6 and 2 thirds. Now, if we go back up and look at our original answer, you'll see that we had six and two thirds. It gives me six full groups of two thirds, and then there are two out of the three that I need. That's where that third comes from. And you can see it works mathematically once I make my uh, reciprocal of that fraction. Okay, so I want you to try one on your own. I'm gonna put the problem up here, and then I want the video to be paused. I want you guys to give it a shot. And then once everybody's kind of got it, we're going to hit play. We're going to see what you did compared to me and see how you did, okay? So go ahead and hit pause now. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. i got to write the problem down for you first. Let's do that. Sorry, guys. Let's take and do 6 divided by, and let's go with something like, uh, let's go with 4. Uh, we haven't done sevenths yet. Now, if you choose to make the model, great. If you don't, that's okay too. If you're kind of getting it and you don't need to do the model anymore, that's fine. I understand. But I'm going to do the model when we're done. So go ahead and hit pause now and give it a shot. Okay, so let's see how you did. If you didn't do the model, that's fine. Just wait until the end, you'll see how you did. But I'm going to go ahead and do the model. <clears throat> I need a model 6, so I'm going to make my 6 squares. I'm going to run out of room here probably, but that's okay. Four, five, we'll make our six docks down here. Now, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to shade these in, but I'm going to go ahead and split these boxes up into sevenths. All right, so one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. Kind of getting skinny numbers on me here. Okay, so there I've taken my six hole and I've split them up into sevenths. Now remember, each group is going to have four sevenths in it. So I'm going to go ahead and circle or, or somehow show that I've got four sevenths per group. So I'm going to grab my blue or my green here, and I'm going to circle the first four sevenths. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to put a circle around those. One, two, three. I'm going to have to take one from that group, so there's another one. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to have to circle this as a group. One, two, three, four. So two from here, two from there. One, two, three, four. Those four right there. One, two, three, four. And I'm marking these with a dot just because it kind of helps me keep track of making sure that I'm only putting four and I'm not making a bigger one or anything like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So here's what I'll do with this one. I'll make a circle here. And then I'll also put an arrow down saying, hey, guess what? You got that one too. One, two, three, four. And now we don't have enough to make the rest of it. So I know now that I was able to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
nine, ten full groups. Now there's two left over. And again, it's not going to be two sevenths left over. It took four sevenths to make one whole group. And so if there's two left over, that's two out of four, which would be two fourths or simplified down to one half. So ideally, our answer is going should be ten and one half. Now let's look mathematically if that's what we had. We take in step one, we're going to write our frac or our whole number as a fraction. We're going to do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. And if we're doing the opposite operation, we're going to write the opposite fraction, which would be 7 over 4. And again, remember how I said it was going to be 2 fourths? Well, there's my 4 on the bottom. 6 times 7 is 42. And 1 times 4 is 4. All right. So that leaves me with 42 40 seconds. Let's go down here and take 42 divided by 4. 4 goes into 4 one time, bring down our 2, 4 does not go into 2, so we put a 0 here, and so now we just have 2 left over, right? 10 is our whole number, 2 left over, and 4, 10 and 2 fourths, or if I divide by 2, I end up with 1 half. Don't forget about that 10 also. And if you look up above, you'll notice that we had 10 and 1 half as our original answer based on our model. Again, I don't expect you to make the model every time. It's there to use if you need it. But I wanted you to see why the denominator changes the way it does, why the number gets bigger when we divide, and also understand why multiplication works because you're having a lot more pieces. And so multiplying gives you the opposite operation. Okay. So the next thing I want you guys to do is I want you guys to work on practicing some just problems. If they're just going to be basic problems, then work on those. When you're done, have it get checked over, make corrections as you need to. When you're done with that and you've made all your corrections, then you can move on and you can try to do some multiplication or division of whole numbers and fractions in real world scenarios so you can see how it's actually done and why it's useful. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. And if you have any questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to ask the sub, or you can always email me as well, as long as it's okay with uh, the sub for, for you to be on your Chromebook and sending an email to me. All right. Thanks, guys.